So if we're looking at uh, Newton's laws here, um, yesterday we saw Newton's laws, first, second, and third law, um, were, were described. And the law that we're really caring about is Newton's second law, which is this F equals MA, okay? Now, we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday, but when we write out F equals MA, there's two important things to recognize here. First, these forces and the acceleration are vectors, and these vectors point in the same direction, okay? So whatever direction the force is, that's the direction the acceleration is gonna be acting. Furthermore, even though we just write this letter as F, this is really possibly more than one force, okay? This is a net force. And what we mean by a net force here, so we have a net force, is it is a summation or an addition of many forces here. So you see this little symbol, this sigma here, that is a summation, it's the addition of many things. We are adding up a lot of forces. So this is like, um, you know, force one plus force two plus force three plus however many forces you have, we're adding them up, okay? That's what we're doing here. Um, sometimes we'll just write it as F equals MA, but we're really saying that the net force, all of the forces added together equals mass times acceleration, okay? So please keep that in mind. Um, it's something that as we just do this more and more, you'll just start writing the letter F and just know what it means. Um, but as we kind of like start moving into this, you'll see me write a lot of sigma F so that we know we're adding up many, many forces in a problem, okay? Um, now, one of the other things we're going to be looking at, we briefly talked about this yesterday, are free body diagrams. If I've got a really complicated uh, system, um, you know, maybe I've got like a dog, and we can all laugh at this drawing, that's like a platypus. Um, but if I've got a dog, this is definitely a dog, we're labeling this as dog. Bork? Um, if I got a dog and it's on some sort of like leash, right, and it doesn't want to move and you're pulling it and you're standing over here and you're like, come on dog, let's let's go on a walk. And then, I don't know, like uh, you're being pulled because you're one of the leash kids that are in the preschool and your parent is over here, right? And they're pulling you. This is a, like a difficult thing to kind of like draw and I don't want to draw this all the time. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use free body diagrams, these FBDs. And what we're essentially going to do is every single object, we are just going to represent them with a single dot, and that's it. So this dot, that is a dog. And this dot, this is you. And this dot, that is some adult pulling you along, okay? You're just dots now. And I know that seems a little bit weird, um, but we're actually using what's called the center of mass to do this. Uh, we'll talk about that more later in the year when it has a little bit more relevance. But essentially, instead of having to deal with all of my terrible drawings, we're just gonna have these dots here to represent what's going on. And the great thing about these dots is it's very easy now for us to draw the forces that are acting. Uh, we know a force acting on the dog is kind of pulling this direction. And we know you are, uh, you know, the dog's pulling back on you with some force like this. And we know that your parent is pulling on you this way. And we know that uh, you're pulling back on your parent like that. So it's much easier to draw all of these forces when we start getting into things because they're just on these dots. It's also very important to recognize that when we draw a free body diagram, so here's a dot of, I don't know, a giraffe or something, whatever. Do not put arrows going into the dot like that. That's not a thing. Um, if you put arrows going into the dot, you haven't really drawn a free body diagram. You always want your arrows to go from the dot out. This is saying that a force is acting on an object. If if you draw this, like you're not you're not saying anything. So be careful about that. Okay, always from the dot out. That's a good force. That's a good force. That's a good force. That's a good force. From the dot going outward. Okay. So. With these ideas right here of saying, look, we have this idea of F equals MA, forces acting on masses cause accelerations. We know we have to add forces together and we're gonna draw our setups like Grandpappy Botzer taught us using these dots here. Uh, well, what can we do with that? Well, if we take a look at all the different possible forces that we have, 
we have uh, actually like a whole slew of different forces that could exist. Um, these are all like contact forces, but essentially some common forces that we'll experience in everyday life are things like your weight. So if here's you, the wonderful free body diagram, we know that your weight is pulling downward on you, right? It's pulling down or rather towards the center of the earth. And uh, this weight, you know, if I drew it like this, we could just label it with the letter W and it is just the force due to gravity, okay? Now, if you're standing on the ground or maybe you're sitting in a chair right now, you're not falling through the floor, which means that while the weight is pulling you, something has to push you up. Otherwise, you know, if you only had your weight acting down, you'd be falling. So something has to support you here. That support force we call a normal force. So this right here, that's a normal force. And that normal force, um, instead of calling it a support force, it's called a normal force because in the world of mathematics, normal always represents something that is perpendicular to a surface. So if here's a floor and you're standing on it, that floor is supporting you upwards, which means that the floor is acting 90 degrees uh, to you know the floor's position, or the, the normal force is acting 90 degrees to the floor's position. So that's why it's called a normal force. Um, if we have something sliding along, uh, maybe you as a kid fell off your bike like I did. Uh, maybe you took a like 40 yard skid on the friction of the Alpine slide at Seven Springs and you tore up your entire face like I did. Um, just, you know, fun stuff of your past lives. Uh, but if you are, you know, feeling some sort of like friction, so if you kind of rub your hands together and they warm up, that's friction right there. Um, this friction is always acting between the surfaces of objects and it's always opposing motion, okay? And we could draw friction, uh, something like this. We could say, hey, look, here's a friction vector. Um, it's a little f. Uh, tension is something that like a rope or a chain would have. Um, you can only pull with the tension. Um, uh, so maybe we've got a rope here pulling an object like this. That's a tension. And then the last thing we have is what's known as a compression force. So if you're kind of like pushing a box forward, uh, we could call this compression force. Uh, sometimes people use a letter C for that. I will often just say this is the letter F. It's just a force. Okay, but all of these here are just forces. They're all things that just go into our F equals MA equation. Uh, but sometimes we might use specific symbols like the weight, the normal, friction, or tension, or in my case, F, just for a generic force. And that'll just allow us to kind of work through equations a little bit better. So let's actually take a look at an equation here, or in kind of a problem setup. Um, what we have here are two individuals trying to push a box. So we've got Len on the left, so here's Len, and over here is Martina. And Len is pushing to the right on this box, and Martina is pushing to the left on this box um, with various forces. So Len's pushing towards the right with a force of 31 newtons. Martina is applying 11 newton force on the box in the opposite direction, to the left. Um, we know the magnitude of the kinetic friction force between the box and the very smooth floor is 4.5 newtons. So we know that there's some friction on the floor equal to 4.5 newtons here as the box is sliding towards the right. So the box is moving this way with some velocity. What we want to know is what's the box's acceleration. So this is our first kind of foray into F equals MA and what the heck is actually going on here in this problem. So while there is a picture drawn for us, let's draw a free body diagram. So if we go ahead and draw this free body diagram here, um, but let's just do the box first, right? So here's the box. This is the object in question that might be moving. So there's our box, okay? Now let's write out the forces that are acting on this box. Well, there is a force of 31 Newtons to the right. So there's a 31 Newton force to the right. Then Martina is pushing with 11 Newtons in the opposite direction. So Martina is going 11 Newtons. Notice how I drew the 31 Newtons larger than the 11 Newtons. That's because the length of the vector kind of designates that the 31 is a bigger number than the 11 here. Okay. Now, if we think about this, Len is pushing harder than Martina, this box is going to move to the right. And we kind of see that in the problem. It says the box is moving towards the right. So if this box has a velocity towards the right, and notice how I drew this velocity off of 
the box itself, that free body diagram, this is just showing me the direction the box is moving. This means that friction will be acting towards the left because friction has to oppose your motion. So we're gonna have some friction here and this friction has a force of 4.5 Newtons. So at this point, we can start setting up our F equals MA equation. We know that the sum of the forces is going to equal a mass multiplied by an acceleration. And in this case, we know the mass of the box. We know the mass of the box is 12 kilograms. So we know here that what's gonna happen is when we start writing this out, the sum of our forces is going to equal the mass, 12 kilograms, multiplied by some acceleration. And this acceleration is what we're looking for. What we need though is what are all of our forces added together? And in this case, we have three forces. We've got the 31, we've got the 4.5, and we've got the 11. Now, if you just did 31 plus 11 plus 4.5, you'd be close, but not, not right. And the reason being is note that because these are vectors, they have a direction associated with them. So one direction is gonna be positive and the other direction is gonna be negative. It doesn't matter which direction is positive, which direction is negative. What matters is that you chose a direction to be positive. So we could just pick one of these directions to be positive, one to be negative. Oftentimes people pick right as positive, but you don't have to. Okay, let's just do it in this problem and see what occurs here. Uh, if we do this and we now add up our forces, we're gonna have a positive 31 plus a negative 11, adding a negative number is like subtraction, so minus 11, and then plus a negative 4.5, so that's another minus 4.5. And that's it, that's the entire setup of the problem. If you can get here, you're good. Because at this point, you just need to do some subtraction, which, let's see, 31 minus 11 should give us 20. And then 20 minus 4.5 is, what's that, 15.5 Newtons. And that's going to equal 12 kilograms times an acceleration. If we then just divide by the 12 kilograms on each side, 15.5 divided by 12, just throw that into a calculator we find we get an acceleration of 1.29 meters per second squared, okay? So we see that that will be the acceleration of the box in this case here. So nothing too crazy. Um, we're really just drawing a picture, labeling our forces, which ones are positive, which ones are negative, and then going to use this F equals MA equation there, okay? So with that, this problem is finished. Stick around for the next one, but for now, adios.